today we're going to be going Ecoline. Ecoline, Ecoline, Ecoline. I actually have no idea how you pronounce it. Um, but I was given these as a Christmas present and I've been desperate to try these for ages. And I was absolutely stoked to bits when this came through. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be having a play with these and seeing what the outcome will be. So I time lapsed the swatch uh, purely because of the length of time it would have taken and added onto the video. But the swatch that I managed to get from it was so vibrant. It was really, really lovely. The pigment laid down really nicely. And I didn't get the really strong line that sometimes you get with dye based water products. So I was quite impressed with how well that spread. I've also time lapsed the illustration. If this is something you want me to do a proper tutorial for, please comment below and I will actually do a tutorial on how to draw some simple designs like this. If you are a member of Skillshare, I do actually have a Skillshare course on there about how to draw quirky simple birds from using simple shapes and you get a little bit of a tutorial on about how to do this type of thing. But I'm more than happy to do maybe something that's not time lapsed for us to have a bit of a chin wag over and for you to just develop and relax a little bit with your illustration skills. So let me know below and we'll go from there. So as I said, I decided to time lapse this purely because of time purposes. I wanted to give you as much on the video to do with the actual colouring process because that then is going over how the Ecoline pens are working, the colour lay down, the way that they spread, the blendability, just a few things that I thought maybe it would be best if we had full time, but I thought for this purpose we didn't need to have it that way. So hopefully you'll stick through this. Uh, you can always just double tap if you need to head straight to where we colour in with the Ecoline products. The one thing I would say with the pens is I did find them a little bit bulkier than normal and I'm used to using Spectrum Noir and people comment how bulky they are and I actually thought these were slightly bulkier they're round but they're comfortable to hold don't get me wrong I thought they could have done with being slightly slimmer um, but overall as you'll see as we go through the colouring process I was quite impressed with the product in general I'm gonna pop some colour down here and there where I want the sky to be. I just have to be careful that I don't go in too many of the areas where I'm going to want the, the green colour to end up. I've mentioned before because they are dye based and not pigment based that's what makes them so vibrant. So I could probably get away with spreading this as we go down. I'm just using a number 10 brush because I want the brush to be quite big so it holds a nice amount of water. I'm not too worried about the le these little leaves being covered in blue because once we put the green on all it's going to do is really sort of turn it a bit more of a tealy colour which I don't object to because I quite like that colour. And I am going to do some green down the very bottom to act like grass. But so far we've been able to spread that colour quite far without having to go back on with the pen so it seems to spread that pigment really nicely and really easily. I'm just going to pop some down the bottom. These are such nice vibrant colours. These would be amazing for little illustrations, kids illustrations. Just if you like your vibrant colours. And it's not eating up the paper too badly either. Sometimes you find the nibs can eat up the paper but we're doing alright so far. I'm just going to blend the green out a bit more into the blue. A bit more of a smoother transition. I think I'm pretty happy with the background. I'm not too worried about having white gaps or spacing on these. So I'm going to grab the most delightful hairdryer. Okay, so you can see on the cold setting that it's helped flatten the paper back out and it's dried really nicely. Let's just randomly select colours. So I'm going to use the orange for the B. So as I mentioned, I'm just going to use the tip and then we're going to use the blender pen just to blend it out and hopefully still give it that sort of watercolour effect. You want to make sure that your paper is fairly dry. We've got a little bit of feathering going on there but actually on the bee it's not much of a problem because it adds to that softness of his bee fuzz. We're going to bring some of that green up into this leaf. I quite fancy having a go at doing a bit of an ombre. So we're going to do the light on the top 
and then we can bring that dark color in at the bottom because we've got the green here we don't want it to blend too much so they blend out really really nicely my concern was as um, you get with some dye products is that you get those lines afterwards I'm not bothered about going outside the edges either by the way in fact I'm going to do it purposely um, is that you you get a funny sort of little line underneath if that makes sense where the dye is still pretty stuck to the paper and it doesn't move but these don't seem to be the case they seem to move really really nicely so I'm really happy so what I'm going to do is come down at the very bottom of that flower and I'm going to use a smaller brush this time again I'm not being fussy about being perfect because that's not how I want this to be let's go with the purple let's have a bit of purple down here shall we the purple is really pigmented I'm going to do it again on this flower here so you can see close up so that's when we put the pigment straight down and then we wash up I've used as I mentioned the Spectrum Noir art liners to do this because I know that they do not blend out with water and what I could do is I could just go in and dab if I want a little bit of texture or to add a bit of dark in there again just dab the end off just be aware that it will eventually desaturate the color out the nib but it's something you can do and I keep drawing over myself now because apparently this paper is not good enough as a canvas I have to use my own fingers so we're gonna go a little bit of 601 over this side just gonna scrabble it down and see what happens bit of the blue and pray that it doesn't look stupid by the time we've done which I'm sure it won't but I do like the way all the colors sit together really nicely and these seem to work as a family so that's the base of the illustration done we just need to do one more dry with the hairdryer and then we're ready to go some dots let's do some up here I'm going to graduate them so they get bigger towards the outer end of the leaf I think to complement them I'm going to do little ones on the other side overall i am really really impressed with these pens and i think i want to be able to have a bit more of a play when i'm doing characters and things like that so i'm definitely and i've just realized i've missed a whole bit of orange off the top there definitely definitely going to have a play i think when it comes to doing character design maybe because the vibrancy of the colors and it's nice just to have something that's not always an alcohol marker so have any of you used these Ecoline? Am I even saying it correctly actually? Ecoline, 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 Ecoline. I don't know. Let me know. Am I saying it right? Because I have no clue. Overall, I'm really impressed with the colours and the pigments and how well it was able to move around. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up. It makes a massive difference. And the subscribe button as well as the bell button to notify you of when I'm going live, which I do every Wednesday. And if you've got any requests for a specific type of product that you want tested or maybe a technique that you'd like to learn, please leave a comment below. I'm happy to go through them with you. But have a good afternoon, evening, whichever it may be, and I shall see you in the next video. Bye!